bless you. Everyone, blessings to you. Greetings to you. I want to leave you with this statement as well. Nothing behind you is worth chasing. And nothing in front of you is worth losing. I heard the Lord speak this to me before I got on here. Before I got on here live, the Lord spoke that statement to me. It's very powerful. You can acquaint that to your life as well. Nothing worth, nothing in the past is worth chasing. Nothing in the future is worth losing. If you remember, it was Jesus that spoke to Satan and said, get thee behind me. So the backwards direction was satanic. The backwards direction was evil. Okay, he said, get thee behind me, Satan. Nothing behind you is worth chasing. And nothing in front of you is worth losing. Because when Jesus was dying on the cross... He went back so that you can go forward. He paid for the back end so that you can live off the front end. Think about that. Jesus paid for the back end so that you can live off the front end. He went backwards. When he became sin, he became Genesis so that you can become a revelation which is the last book in the Bible. Think about that. Jesus became sin so that you can become a revelation. When he became sin, he became Genesis. Because the sin happened in Genesis. So Jesus became the Garden of Eden. So that you can receive the harvests from the Garden of Gethsemane. Think about that. Isn't that glorious? That's powerful. He became the garden of Eden so that you can receive the harvests from the garden of Gethsemane. Because when he said, not my will be done, not my will, your will be done, and he drank of the cup, that cup made your cup run over. Isn't that glorious? When he drank the cup, you had access to every cup that God would pour out. Everybody share this broadcast. Invite your followers. Invite your followers. Share this broadcast.
experiencing the supernatural, you got to understand that concept because Jesus went backwards so you can go forward. Jesus became the garden of Eden for you to become the garden, uh, receive the rewards from the garden of Gethsemane. Jesus drunk the cup so that your cup can run over. You ever thought about that? Jesus drunk the cup. He said he'll drink of the cup. Now, Psalm 23 can manifest. Psalm 23 can manifest. So he drunk the cup so that you can have your cup run over. Then we see Jesus wearing a crown. Now, saints, what's so powerful is that when Jesus put on this crowns of thorn, these crowns of thorn, uh, the, the crown of thorns, it represented the curse being upon his head. Now, saints, Jesus dealt with every mental disability. And watch this. I'm going to take it another route. Because we know that the mind deal with thoughts. But Jesus pit the supernatural riches anointing upon you as a crown. Let's read this in the word, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 24. Uh, as a matter of fact, let me just flow. Proverbs 14, 24. Proverbs 14, 24 says that the crown of the wise is their riches. The crown of the wise is their riches. In another text, it says the crown of the wise is their wealth. So the word of God is saying that when you are wise, and the word of God told us what it means to be wise, because Jesus told a parable that there was five wise virgins and there was five foolish virgins. He said the five wise virgins had oil in their lamps, meaning they were connected. Remember the anointing teaches you all things? It means that they was underneath discipleship, meaning God was teaching them. He was mentoring them. The spirit of the Lord had right to tell them what to do. Think about this. The fact that they had oil in their lamp, the oil is the anointing. First John 2.27 says the anointing teaches you all things. So they were teachable. So when the Bible talks about the wise, these are individuals that are teachable. They are mentored by the spirit of God, by an apostle, a prophet, a pastor, a teacher, evangelist, one, one that God will send to them. They're teachable individuals. They are hungry for the, for the instructions of God. They're hungry for the path of God. They want his will to be done. They want him to be happy. Isn't this glorious? So, when Proverbs chapter 14, verse 24 says, the crown of the wise is their riches. The wise are people that are being taught by the Lord. They're being mentored. They're being directed. They're being instructed. They're being commanded. They're being rebuked. They're being perfected. They're being trained. But afterwards, it says that their crown, after they have been trained, will be riches. So saints, here's, here's what's so wonderful. When the Lord is chastening you, when the Lord is correcting you, when he's using your man of God to tell you divine direction, prophetic path, all that leads to gold. 
See, the straight and narrow way is a pathway of discipline, sacrifice, submission, but is rewarded with a hundredfold. Is rewarded with abundant life. Is rewarded with good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, men given into your bosom. Is rewarded with he'll give you the desires of your heart. So what do you desire? Desire is proof that your spirit is at work. Desire is proof that your spirit is at work. You don't want to retire your spirit and hire your flesh. If you retire your spirit, you hire your flesh. Your flesh works. It works through your mind. Romans chapter 8, I believe, talked about the carnal mind being enmity with God. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. I believe that's Romans chapter 8. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. I think it's Proverbs chapter 10 says that the memory of the just is blessed. Meaning your mind, your mentality, your soulish realm is full of power. Having a powerful soul. The mind of Christ is God giving you his soul. A soul tie with Jesus. And when the soul tie come, who the son set free is free indeed. Now, saints, I want you to see this. Whom the son sets. When the sun set you, just like an alarm clock, when the sun sets you, he positions you, whom the sun sets. So God put you on his time clock, just like an alarm. That's why you experience conviction. Because whom the sun sets. Now also another revelation I want you to catch. When the sun is coming up. When the sun is coming up. And the shining is coming through. In it's morning time. They call it. Sunrise. But when the day is like it's coming to an end and the sun is there, they call it a sunset. Did you know that yellow is the color of righteousness? Because yellow is one of the radiant colors that spring forth from the sun. It's beautiful. That's why if you see in school, you color a sun, you color it yellow. You don't color it green. What did Malachi say after he taught the people about sowing and honoring God with their money? He said, then the son of righteousness, the sun, S-U-N, the sun, which shows you that Jesus is the S-O-N and the S-U-N. Now, don't get misunderstand. Don't misunderstand me. He's everything. He has a body. <laughs> but it says the son of righteousness. Malachi shall arise with healing in his wings. That's Jesus. But it calls him the S-U-N. So when the Bible says whom the son sets free. He set you just like the sun sets in the evening. It shines despite darkness coming around it or being near to it. It's still shining. Even though darkness is in proximity, even though darkness may be scheduled, it's still shining. 
So whom the sun sets is because the sun makes you a sunset. And when the sun makes you a sunset, no matter the darkness that may be apprehending or around, it doesn't affect you. Now you know why Jesus said you are the light of the world. The world is in darkness. But you're a sunset whom the sun sets free. Why? Because when the sun of righteousness arrives, he got healing. It brings freedom. It brings deliverance. It brings life. So when the Bible talk about whom the son sets free. Jesus is making you a sunset. You have become a giver of freedom. You're not bound. See, I'm not talking to you from the grave. I'm talking to you from the resurrection power. So if you, if you listening to me and your mind is not renewed and you are stuck, it may be hard for you to apprehend how I'm talking. I'm talking to you from the glory realm. Jesus made you a sunset. And freedom is your fruit. Whom the sun sets free. Is free in what? Deed. Fruit. So because he made you a sunset. And because he set you up as a son, S-O-N. You give birth to freedom. Is free indeed. So all your deeds are in the freedom of Jesus realm. All your deeds, your mental deeds, your physical deeds. Your financial deeds, your relationship deeds, all of it is in the freedom realm. Now, Jesus received the crown of thorns so that you can receive the crown of riches. Somebody can quote me on that. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 24 says, the crown of the wise is their riches. The crown of the wise, the the word of God says that if you are the wise, you're going to wear a crown of riches. That's supernatural money. So when, when you let God direct you, tell you what to do, riches is an open portal flowing over your head, your life, your path. The straight and narrow is a streets of gold grace. Because see, Jesus talked about if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. And Jesus talked about if you put your hands to the plow, you look back, you're not fit for the kingdom. And Jesus talked about if your eye offends, you pluck it out. If your hand offends, you cut it off. And Jesus talked about forgive. But then Jesus talked about once you master all these things. You shall receive a hundredfold in this life. Not in the next life. Wow. Not after you leave this body. He said you'll receive a hundredfold in this life. See, you had to leave family, but then he said, I'll give you family.
See, you had to leave houses and lands and opportunities to have houses and lands that came from the world in your own path. But then he said, I'll give you houses and lands. Where is the major suffering that you're going to experience with Jesus? Where's the major suffering? Is in telling your flesh no. When your flesh wants to go to a city and it's not your city, God has you where you are, but your flesh wants to move because your flesh is tired of the atmospheric dustiness. <laughs> And you submit to the Holy Ghost and say, Holy Spirit, you lead my life. I'll leave when you lead me to leave. When you take me out. Remember, Isaac wanted to leave that place and the Lord told him, stay here. And remember, he sold his way out in that place. But even the people started asking him to leave. Even after prosperity started hitting him and he received a hundredfold. But you notice he had to stay where the Lord put him until time. There's always going to be a deliverance. But like I said, delivery is more important than deliverance. Delivery is more important than deliverance. Delivery is what you give to God, your attitude, your mindset, your reaction, your emotions, your moods. How you carry yourself in the presence of God. Are you happy? Serve the Lord with gladness. Psalm 100. Quench not the spirit. Thessalonians chapter 5. Blessed is he that is not offended because of me. This is all Jesus. He's dealing with delivery. Delivery is more is higher than deliverance. And when I say that, having the right spirit before God comes through with what you want. Having the right attitude before you get healed. Once you get healed, that's a deliverance. But having faith when the symptoms of the sickness is popping up in your body, and still praising God, that's delivery. Delivery is more powerful than deliverance. When Peter went to jail, the church, the Bible said in the book of Acts, they were praying. They was moving in delivery. Nobody cursed God and said, how could you let Peter go to jail? Nobody cursed God and said, how could you let James and all these other disciples, some of them was getting killed. How come you let them get killed? Nobody was questioning God. Nobody was challenging God. They prayed, they praised, they gave thanks. Delivery brought the deliverance, but the delivery was more powerful than the deliverance. Because the delivery was proof that they trusted the Lord. Delivery was proof that they loved Jesus more than the situation they was experiencing. Delivery released angels to minister to Peter, got him out of that cell. Delivery is more powerful than deliverance. Remember, it was Esther. Remember, it was Esther. Remember, the children of Israel needed to be delivered because Haman was plotting for them. But what did she do? Go on a three-day fast? Because deliverance was going to be birth, but her delivery was more important. You think about that. The delivery was more important than the deliverance. Because if she stood before the king with a wrong attitude, with a wrong mindset, with a wrong tone of voice, it could have stopped the deliverance. It could have messed up the deliverance. God wouldn't have been pleased. Even if they did get delivered, God still wouldn't have been pleased with Esther's approach. But her delivery... She got the delivery correct. She got the delivery correct. Delivery is more powerful 
then deliverance. Apostle Paul with the three uh, messengers of Satan trying to buffet him. That's he looking for deliverance. But the grace being sufficient, Jesus told him, my power is made known in your weakness. Jesus is shifting his delivery. So now Apostle Paul is not going to look at this situation the same. Now Apostle Paul is going to look at this situation from a perfect mind, the mind of Christ. Because delivery is more powerful than deliverance. Delivery is more powerful than deliverance. Every time you're being a solution to the work of God, to your man of God, you're operating in delivery. It's a mindset, it's an attitude, it's a motive. Your delivery comes from your intent, your heart. Remember Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. I think that's, uh, is it Proverbs chapter four, I believe. The powerful thing about it is that the delivery is what Jesus will judge. Remember, he said, I come quickly, my reward is with me to judge every man according to his deeds. What was your delivery on the earth? See, you are a package. And just like UPS would drop off a package, FedEx would drop off a package, you've been dropped off. So how are you handling your delivery? You never make excuses. The man with a 38 years infirmity. Remember? Jesus comes upon him, talking to him, and he tells him, will you be made whole? The man is telling Jesus all the people that's jumping in the water before him and how they're getting healed. And Jesus is like, no, 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 I, I don't care about that. It's not so much about your deliverance, it's about your delivery. Will you be made whole? What's your attitude? Is it in your will? Is it my will, but is it in your will? See, you got to get God's will in your will. Your will may be too traditional. Your will may be too self-righteous. You have to get God's will in your will. You got to receive the impartation of God's will inside of you. Because your will may be too rooted in false humility. Nothing behind you is worth chasing. Nothing in front of you is worth losing. I'm going live on Periscope.